Let the peace of God and his presence never depart from your life. All the days that you live in this earth, in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to read 2 Corinthians. We are going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I'm reading verse 9 and verse 10. 2 Corinthians 5, 9 and 10. Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. A friend of mine used to say, you can live anyhow you like, do anything you like, but remember that there is going to be another accounting. Not accounting unto men, but this time accounting unto God when this life is done. Let's assume you live until Jesus comes. Yes, you didn't die. You will still show up and give an accounting. Because we all will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. When you appear there, what kind of judgment do you expect? Because anyway, we are reasonable human beings. We know what to expect. In spite of all of the self-deception we try to bring upon ourselves. We like to be persuaded by everything that says whatever you do is right. Even when it is wrong. You know what? There is nobody who does wrong that does not know it. You try to justify it to yourself. But remember, there will be a rewarding time. There will be a time of payback. Even in this world, there are paybacks for the things that we do. What are the things that you are doing in life and trying to justify? What are the things that you are doing in life and trying to tell yourself, well, no problem, God understands. What are the things that you are doing in life and you are telling yourself, grace covers everything? Why would grace cover your iniquity? And the same grace refuses to cover the iniquity of the other fellow simply because you say it's not born again and you are born again. Is God a respecter of persons? Is God partial towards some because you say I've accepted Jesus? Does that preclude you from God's judgment? No, he said all of us will appear there and receive reward for everything that we have done, whether they be good or bad. So you're on. What do you think? When it gets to that time, God is going to exclude you. Whatever you did, doesn't matter. I know there's a body of preaching that says, whatever you do, so long as you have told yourself you are a child of God, God won't count against you. Well, I don't know what scripture they are reading from. And it's very easy to take a verse of the scripture and stand it on its head and do a doctrine out of it. And people who are tossed and carried away by every wind of doctrine will listen to those things. More than that, if you are among the people who are desirous of a particular thing to hear, you will listen to those things. Is it because they have itching ears? What are they looking for? For people who say what they want. That's all. And there are so many people who say what you want. But if you follow the true scripture, you will find that God forbids those things. Now, when the scripture says, those who are engaged in this kind of thing shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And somebody shows up to tell you, in spite of what you do, all of these things, grace has covered it. You have to think again, who is right? Does the scripture say grace allows you to continue in sin? No, it rather says God forbids such thinking. So, learn to live your life unto God. Learn to live your life knowing that there will be a time of reward. I like to read that thing again. That each one may receive the things done in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad, you can't change it. In the end, Jesus says, I come quickly to reward every man according to what his deeds deserve. What are you doing? What do they deserve? He didn't say, I'll reward you according to what grace deserves. Because some of us think that we'll be judged according to the terms of grace. Wonderful judgment. He says, you will reward you according to what your deeds deserve. And that is a consistent theme of scripture. It is so consistent that it takes only a madman to think that that thing won't happen. But if you follow the scripture properly, you will understand that there will be payments for what you are doing. Be careful. Yes, we are human beings. Yes, we make mistakes. But don't make the mistake trying to justify it. If you have made a mistake, if you have sinned, you say we confess our sins. 
he is faithful and will forgive all of our iniquities. Instead of trying to justify it, confess. Own up what you have done wrong. And ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen you that you don't go in the path of wrongdoing again and again and again. As some of us find ourselves doing. As the scripture itself says, the heart of the human being is desperately wicked continually. What does it mean? It means that we have a tendency towards doing what is evil. That is the natural propensity of man to do that which is not right in the sight of God. To do that which is offensive to God. Now, but there is also the power of the Holy Spirit. The power in the blood of Jesus that breaks the dominance of sin. He said, sin shall not have dominion over you. Now, but why does sin have dominion over some of us? Because we have yielded our minds to it. As the scripture itself says, whatever you yield your mind to become subject to, that will rule over you. Let's learn not to yield our minds again to the things that are offensive to God. Because when the chips are down and when we are standing before him, the excuses we give to ourselves today will not be tenable. There is not one excuse that will be tenable on the day of judgment. A day of judgment is coming. A day of judgment will come for you. A day of judgment will come for me. There is none of us that will avoid it. There is a judgment seat of Christ. And you know what it says? It says on that day, books will be opened. Which books? One of them is the book of the things that we are doing. Everything you do is recorded. The things you say that are recorded for us. As Jesus said, whatever you say, you will find it on the day of judgment. There will be books concerning those things. What would you say? Stand before God and start to give an excuse? There won't be room for those excuses. It is now time to change. This is the time to get the thing right. Not when we have come before the judgment seat. At that time it will be too late. It is actually too late for anybody who is dead today. It is still time. If you are alive now, you can change everything. Even if you are going to die one minute from now, you can change everything. After all, the thief on the cross, how many minutes did it have? In the few minutes, he was able to get himself into heaven, into paradise. And you can do the same thing, even if you are hearing this word on your sick bed. And you had been so terribly bad, you can repent. But how about if you have a life ahead of you, a future ahead of you, learn to live according to God. That is more difficult. Why? Because the tendency to respond to the heart of man, which is desperately wicked continually, is always there. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, which is the prayer that I will pray for all of us, we should be able to overcome that side of it. For he says again, sin shall not have dominion over you. And that sin must not have dominion over you. That sin must not have prevailing power over you. Some of us, we find that sin seems to have that power over us. It is because our minds have gone wrong. But somebody will say, I have done everything. To stand up, but I still see myself falling. Today, that power will break away from you because I'm going to pray. But I'm going to pray now, Father, in the name of Jesus. First of all, the person who finds himself dominated by evil, by sin. I ask for the presence of the power that is in the blood of Jesus. The power in the blood of redemption. The power in the blood that took us away from the stranglehold of the devil. Today, that power comes upon you and breaks you away from this power of sin. Sin shall no longer have dominion over you. That power is broken now in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray, Lord, for everybody that we have that consciousness that will give account for our lives. That we learn to live more unto good and permanently unto good and discard the part of evil. I pray also for those who have just a few minutes left, if they will turn to you now in repentance, accept them. That thief was accepted on the cross. Accept them even in their last moment. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.